Hi, so Brent Norling here. I'm sitting here with Damien Grant from Waterstone Insolvency. Um, we are here to talk about the budget from uh, Grant Robinson um, and the, the four things uh, that really matter for business owners. So there will be a time to talk about the merits of the budget in a wider context. Yep. Um, we, we're not going to do that today. Today is just really, look, these are the four things that matter for business owners um, and, and what business owners need to focus on um, pretty much immediately. Um, so so I'll kick, I'll kick that off. Um, um, all right, so, um, so Brent, Brent obviously is from um, Norling Law. So Brent, I think the first thing we want to talk about is the change in capital, which yeah. is really important. Yeah, so look, currently if, um, I'll, just, I'll just use an example, you buy a laptop yeah. um, and you know that, that laptop costs uh, $5,000 because it's, it's a really good laptop. Um, uh, the current system is... Does that apply to Macintosh as well? Macintosh? No, Apple's. <laughs> <laughs> Apple's, I don't use, I don't use Apple, I use Apple phone. Um, okay, alright. So, look... If you buy if you buy a asset or a, a, something on the on the, on the on the balance sheet currently it's you need to expense you can expense five hundred dollars of that and then you you depreciate the rest over over time um, and, and claim that back. But um, so one of the announcements from Grant is is increasing from five hundred dollars to five thousand dollars, which if you're and about when does, to, when does that kick in? Uh, so it's in the next financial year is is. Um, what Grant has said. So, first of April, um, any capital items purchased uh, are going to to change to five thousand, and this this could be a massive deal for business owners who are heading into a, a remote working environment yeah, where big news. there might be a lot of laptops being purchased, um, which some retailers will be doing well. Yeah, uh, and and so if you are looking to purchase those kinds of items, if you can wait to the first of April, there's going to be some massive tax advantages in doing so. And it's really significant as well because you're actually talking about you can you can buy five of these things at four thousand dollars a pop and you can actually expense the entire lot. So that entire expenditure comes off your PL for that year. Mm -hmm. Does only apply from the first of April though. So if you yeah. buy it before then you're gonna have to depreciate that asset over time. Yeah. Yeah. Which is which is useful because I think we're both we're both small business owners and we're both looking at mm. buying um, those sorts of capital equipment right now. Yeah. So this was a, um, it's a shame we purchased one two weeks ago, so Grant yeah. <laughs> could, could have given us a heads up. A heads up from Grant. Robinson. Unlikely. Okay. <laughs> so, so Damien. All right, um, the other really big thing is that um, the Ministry of Finance has announced a wage subsidy, and, and it's big. He's talking about up to $585 per person, which over 40 hours is actually less than the minimum wage, but we won't criticise them for that. If you're a business owner, that can demonstrate that you're going to get a 30% reduction in revenue as a result of coronavirus. So you've got to show 30% revenue. So that's right, right away, that's hospitality. That's mm. um, um, hotels, people affected by tourism. Yep. You've got a whole raft of industries which is captured by that. You've got a 30% uh, downturn in revenue. You also need to indicate or show that you've consulted with your bank or got a financial advisor. So for a lot of business owners, that, that effectively means talking to their accountant. But you are able to go to, um, and I think they're talking about the Ministry of, of, Ministry of um, Social Development is going to be running it. You are able to get up to $150,000 per business. So we assume by that he means limited liability company. So if you've got five employees, you're affected by this, you're able to get 585. According to what Grant Robinson said in his speech, this is going to be money that's going to be paid to the employers to uh, as a wage subsidy. Mm. There are a couple of conditions um, associated with it. One of them appears to be that you have to maintain, you're going to pay your staff at least 80% of their wages going forward. But the really important thing for and this really applies to small business because of the 150,000 um, cap. And this is a policy that potentially goes out for 12 weeks. If you're in that space and you're seeing your revenue fall by more than 30% and you're thinking, do I stay in business or do I close my doors? Mm. And because of the great uncertainty about this virus, 
Robinson has given those business owners the opportunity to, ta to take a breath, to say, okay, you're still probably going to lose money because you can't use this to pay your mortgage, you can't use this to mm. pay the, the rent, but you can use it to maintain capacity in your employees. So I think especially in places like hospitality and tourism, yep. that's, that's a really big incentive for the business owners to actually keep the doors open. Yeah, and especially for those business owners who, who must currently be thinking, you know, if they're winding down, they need to wind their expenses down, and that includes staff. Yeah, which, staff's a big one. Which, you know, we've, we've talked about recently in the, in the moral obligation that goes with being an employer to staff. And so for this, this, this policy may mean that some staff get to keep their jobs that otherwise uh, would not. And it means that business owners are able to maintain capacity, because that's the other really important thing. If you're in something like hospitality, you know, um, we know from our own experience and, and yours in hospitality, chefs are one of the really critical things that restaurants need to, to maintain. So if you're running a restaurant, your chef is really important. And if you're, if you're thinking, you know, is this thing going to blow over in, in two months or will it go on for six months? At least you've got a bit of headroom now for those who, are, who want to take that option. Yeah, I suppose when it comes to high level staff, it's a little bit different though because the the amount per employee is only 585 so it's, yeah, it, it is, is 585 per week so i mean it's a buffer but it's not going to be a full cover um no. for them but but it's 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 certainly better than it was um you know well even when, when we were talking um, just recently so the the issue that some businesses that if you're a business that's on the margin then this isn't going to save you Mm. This is not enough. If your business was already in trouble, mm. then this is not going to save you. If you're a business that was doing well up until this, yeah. Robinson has, has, has given you those businesses a lifeline, and now you're, you've got a bit more money to make a decision. And look, he's, ta he's talking big money. I mean, he's talking five billion bucks mm. that is potentially going to be available for this. And I think that's an indication that this is, this is not just effect, affecting hospitality. I mean, that's what we think of straight away is tourism, hospitality, yeah. hotels, all the rest of it, but there's I think there's much others. more. Yeah. I mean, he's talking about other money for in New Zealand, but we're, they're not our customers. Yeah. Not yet. So probably the, the, the third thing um, that uh, is impactful for business owners um, is, is, look, the government is increasing its, uh, the IRD's discretion to remit use of money, interest and, and, and penalties. So, um, you know, for, for IRD debts that are unpaid, um, there is going to be some ability to have, uh, you know, an interest-free loan for for some period. And just just talk because you you're in that space, you negotiate mm. on behalf of the clients with the yeah. revenue. I mean, how do you find them historically dealing with that sort of issue? Yeah, I mean, we we have negotiated um, away penalties quite routinely. So penalties is usually the it's much more significant than use of money interest. It'll usually double the debt um, if, if it's spread out over so a this significant is period. So this is 250 for not filing the returns? No, is that this, what you're talking about? No, no, it, I'm, I'm talking about the penalties that continues to accrue on um, overdue IRD So this debt. is the interest component? Uh, no, there's, there's also penalties that, that go on top of that. Right, and, okay. and so quite often we're able to negotiate that away, yeah. um, and that's that's fairly easy. Use of money interest in some cases yes, in some cases no. It's always it's always um, case by case. But that discretion already existed. I mean that that ex that discretion from the IRD was always there, and the IRD's focus is to maximise uh, recovery for the commissioner. And so, what do you think it means that Grant Robinson has said this in the speech? He's granting additional mm -hmm. discretionary powers. I mean, practically speaking. What are we likely to see from the revenue going forward on yeah, this stuff? It'll be interesting. I mean, um, we're going to have to dive deep into this, um, but but it's definitely a solid steer from the government in, in terms of what the IRD should be doing with with overdue debt. And it's really interesting because in the Tax Administration Act, it's it's it's, it's actually a crime right. not to account for GST and POA, and, and yet here we have the Minister of Finance. Well, no, no, they have to account for it, um, and they have to do the returns. Um, but yeah, in terms of payment, you're you're exactly right. If you don't okay. if you don't pay it, yeah. It's um, anyway. So I, I I think that's that's a that's a really clear steer from the Ministry of Finance to the yeah. uh, to Ministry to take a um, a step back. The other interesting change that's come in from uh, Grant Robinson uh, today 
was he's also given, it's a much smaller relief package, but he's saying that if you have somebody who has, has to self-quarantine, that they get the two weeks of $585, and that applies not just to, that, that presumably that applies to anybody who comes back from overseas, that applies to anybody who had reasonable expectation, I guess, uh, has been um, uh, exposed, also applies to people who have to look after other people who have been um, impacted. So you get two weeks. If you are able to work from home, you can't claim the benefit. Mm. You have to be able to work from home. And again, this 585, 350 for part-time is coming in through the employer. So the mm. employer gets the money. It's not clear looking at Grant Robinson's uh, speech today whether that's, in, in, uh, whether PAY attaches to that. We're going to assume that it does, but that's not, but that's not clear. I guess the final thing that Mr. Robinson pointed out, this is a $12 billion. He's talking about 4% of the GDP. Well, that was 4% of the GDP before this happened. It's probably 6% of the GDP now because the GDP is shrinking. But um, he's also talking about additional government subsidies coming in, in his May budget. So I think this is we should look at this as potentially just tranche one. So if you are a business owner and you are feeling the effects of this infection. There's there's help here now. It may not be enough for some business, but it's something and more help may, mm. may well be coming. Yeah. All right. So look, I'm sure you're going to hear more from us in the near future, but that's, that's all from us for now. Thank you.